Okay, I have a review and tutorial for WinX DVD Ripper for Mac, and there is also a Windows version available. It's the latest version at the time I'm making this video, which is version 4.6.2. It costs around $36. I'm not sure how much it is in UK pounds, but I'll put it in the description along with this YouTube video. You can basically rip your DVDs, or if you've already ripped them and you have ISOs, you can convert those ISO image files to various other formats that are both easily playable on your computer but also on other devices such as your smart TV or your Apple TV box or whatever some sort of device you may have such as a tablet which doesn't have a DVD drive so you can select DVD from here a DVD folder ISO delete which is just remove it, remove it from the list you can also click these buttons here preferences let's have a quick look here you can select the default audio language from here you can open the output folder after it's convert finish converting. So basically when it so say you have the default video folder as movie slash Mac video library, it'll open that folder in the finder. Shut the computer down after conversion, which is really handy because if you have lots of files lined up or you have it converting from a slow format such as maybe an eight old AVI to something else uh, sometimes it can be a bit slow so you could always have it going overnight especially if you've got a big long list and have it shut down to save power etc so that's really handy you can add compatible video files after it's converted to your itunes library that's very handy check for software updates to the program it's by default and always which will mean it will check every single time you open the program which isn't particularly bad make sure you're up to date but if you open and close the program a lot it will check for a new update to the program every single time you reopen the program so i tend to like every day so I do it once a day so it's got to be checking often enough but at the same time not every single time you close and open the program then you have the default folder you want videos to go to and the default still image folder you want still images to go to now this is the default when you open the program you can change it but you can also change it each time manually down here so maybe you want that to be the folder 90% of the time but occasionally you want to change it well you don't have to change it in preferences you can change it down here each time let's open ISO I have an ISO of Night of the Living Dead a DVD rip of Night of the Living Dead here because I don't have a DVD drive in this MacBook Pro so I have a ISO ready so we select this if we wanted to go from an actual disk we would select this option first select iso you see you can change the tabs from here and it says no disk detected because i have no drive then you have dvd folder path to a dvd folder and iso so we go use iso and load night.iso from the desktop then hit ok loading disk analyzing info now you get a sheet come down for output profile this is where you select what you want the file to be ripped to or will converted to so you can go to general profile which is just a general generic mp4 video then you can select from a slider low quality which will convert faster or high quality which will be slower but higher quality video and there's presets for various devices such as just a general dvd backup or various apple devices so iphone ipad ipod apple tv itunes iDVD, which is an old program that is no longer updated imovie for editing in final cut pro and airplay so you can play it using airplay on your macbook then you have various android mobile phones and tablets microsoft devices sony devices such as the psp ps3 ps4 vita and one of their smartphones then you have some other devices here, such as Blackberries, Nokias, PDAs, and Zen. Then you have do, uh, various web profiles, such as converting ready to upload to YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, or generic web video. Then you have various other common video profiles, such as a generic video, Mac video, such as an, again, MP4, either as an MPEG or H.264. Normally you'd want that one. And a few other formats here. Then you have ones that should work be better for working on a pc a windows pc such as an avi video that is xvid and you have chromecast here as well wmv various ones here just if you want if you know the person maybe if you're converting one of your own products or whatever for somebody to watch such as a reviewer or whatever if you've made a movie and you've got a dvd and you're ripping it and give it to somebody else you know they're using a Windows PC, you might want to use a PC general option, whereas if they're on Mac, you maybe want to select this or 
go to Apple devices and select something like the Apple TV box, and that should work on most Apple products. Then various music formats as MP3, ACC, or AC3. Then TS video here. So mostly you've got to either want to be using a generic MP4 or converting for a device such as the Apple TV. And the new Apple TV is the very newest. That is, that is the new fourth gen Apple TV box, which has the, the App Store, etc. So it does support profiles for that very latest Apple TV box, which is good. It has up, been updated for that. It does also support the older ones, such as the third gen and second gen. Now, what I'd like to point out here is it says this one's recommended, but I notice it will always convert it to a resolution of 640 by 480, which is basically DVD quality. But you might not want to do that. Maybe you know yours is slightly bigger, like 7, um, I think it's 720, the UK DVD PAL DVDs or whatever. So you might want to select this one. It's a H.264, which is what it's most compatible anyway, I think. And then it'll keep the origin resolution. So I would probably use this one here. Then you select your quality. Let's just leave it D4 and hit done. We can now see a preview here. We can play pause. We can do a still image here. We could pause it here and hit that and that will take a still image of that frame. We can adjust the volume if we don't want any volume when we're looking at the preview or we can full screen. Hit escape on the keyboard. Now we can see tags and what setting tags does is allow you to give it your own file name. So we could say, well, we don't want it called that. We might want it called Night of the Living Dead 68. This is the old one, the public domain one from 1968. Then we could give it a title. We could give it an artist name. So that could be, say, the director, or it could be the company, such as Universal, 20th Century, Century Fox, or whatever. I can't remember who made it. Well, I know the director, but I can't remember what company made it. I'm just going to leave it. And for genre, you might put, say, horror, and give it a comment here. And I say, OK. We can also hit here, which has got a symbol of the device that we set the preset for. And we can actually customize the preset a little bit further. So say we had used the other one, which had a resolution of 640. We could have clicked this wheel, brought this dialog up, and actually selected Keep Origin from here. So that'd be one way to do it if you wanted that MPEG-4 version, but you didn't want it at that particular resolution. We can also select our frame rate, uh, our frames per second here. We might want to say Keep Origin as well. Then we got this, but on this particular preset, it wasn't it won't let me select any others. You can select the bit rate here. You have a few choices, and that might depend upon the preset, of course, what you can select. Keep origin for aspect ratio as well, and various audio codecs and sample rates here. This is, for, just in case you don't know, 44,100. That is CD quality audio. DVD quality and Blu-ray quality is 48,000 and 96,000 is studio quality. I doubt most devices support that. So that is something you might want to change. If you know you're ripping from a source such as a DVD or Blu-ray or whatever, well, DVD in this case, that has DVD quality audio 48,000, you might want to select that to get the best quality audio. Then you select the number of channels. Maybe it's surround sound, maybe it's stereo, in which case... in you might want to change that, though it probably would detect it. In this case, we're using stereo, so it's two you select there. Bit rate, 128 bits, and that will depend upon the quality you want. But of course, the higher the quality, the longer it will take to convert. We're going to apply it to all. So if we have a list of videos lined up here, we can apply the same settings to them all. Or hit OK, can't, so I'm going to hit OK. We can then use a high quality rendering engine in this product, which will get us a much higher quality end video but it will take longer to convert but let's just tick that we can also do deinterlace in here and we can do safe mode if we have problems deinterlacing i would only tick if you need it cores well this isn't just cores this is threads so for example i uh, in this macbook pro i have two cores but two virtual cores so i have four cores if you count the virtual one so it has detected that and i have four here i can't go any higher because i don't have any more physical or 
virtual cores. If you did, you could select them here. It should detect the highest possible one anyway. But if for some reason you want more than one product, um, more than one process on the go like this and another program, and you want to sort of throttle it a bit, you could always turn this down to two cores, which would free up a few cores for another program. But the chances are, if you're converting a video, you're going to want to get as much speed out of it as possible. So I'd leave it on the highest core count. It will let you select. We can then select a destination to put it in here. By default, it will be what we set in preferences. If we have more than video, one video here, we can merge them. If you want to load a subtitle track, you can here. You load subtitles. I don't have any for it. You can also look at some of the options here as well on ticket if there's if there's more than one video within this video you've loaded for some reason the cvd you can untick the ones you don't want and tick the ones you do want to convert a little tip if for some reason you need in, to change the language of this interface you can go to help language and there's some others there such as german and italian and french and spanish there isn't many other options up here pretty standard menus from here, you can just look at your about box. It tells you the version, which is the latest at the time of making this video. This is where you can check for any updates. And that's about it. This gets a kind of a box up, which is like the about box, but you can put in your serial number once you bought it. I've already done that. I've already registered the program. And that is pretty much it. We can now hit run and convert. We'll get a dialogue up here with details such as what file it's converting what the output name will be how long it's going to take current time remaining time we'll recalculate in a minute start time duration frames per second so the duration of the video is hour 35 and it's going to end up as a video that's that length as well in case we've changed anything there the frames per second we're getting Progress bar 0% at the moment, converting one of one video files. We can tell it to shut down after conversion here. Even if we didn't have it as default and preferences, we can do it each time manually. And untick that if we don't want it, even though it, we've had it set to be turned on by default and preferences, we can change it, untick it each time if necessary. And I'm just going to stop that. As you saw, it did open the folder with the video, even though it wasn't finished. But if it had been finished, it, they, there would have been your folder with the video. Quite handy. So that's basically the idea of how you use the program. It's very, very straightforward, very simple to use interface, especially if you've used any other video converters or rippers before. It's going to be very easy to figure out, very straightforward. It's not the fastest video converter I've used. I've used... Uh, one which i use on a regular basis as i reviewed before which is faster i won't say it because it this video isn't about it but if you look up video converter on my youtube channel you'll find reviews i've done for other programs and i have reviewed quite a few in the past in fact i think if i remember rightly i reviewed reviewed the video converter that WinX does this is a dvd ripper it's primarily aimed at ripping from a dvd or iso file to a video format rather than just opening a video on your computer, such as an AVI, and converting to different formats. They do do a video converter, which, like I say, slightly different, similar idea to this program, but this is primarily targeted at ripping from DVDs. So I hope this has been useful for you, so you know how to use it, seeing what it's like. Uh, it's not the fastest video converter ever, but it's a DVD ripper, which is a bit different, I guess, and... There is a demo available on their website. I will put a link in the description to the website so you can check it out for yourself. And I always recommend people watch my videos. If there's a trial or demo available, I recommend you don't just take my word for what it's like. You go and actually download it. Make sure it works fine for you. Make sure you like the interface yourself and try it out yourself. So the link will be in the description. You can search my YouTube channel search my videos on my YouTube channel for video converter to see actual reviews I've done for video converters rather than DVD rippers and check them out as well. Please like and comment on this video and if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel as it just takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Thanks.